a, a simple technique that's going to help you become more aware of the biases that you're capable of, of finding inside yourself. I call it the first thought activity. It's very simple. Uh, watch the first thought, the first assumption that pops into your brain when you encounter someone who's different from yourself. Just the first words that enter your consciousness, the first assumptions, again, that you might make. So let me use an example of a homeless person. Uh, you're walking down the street and there's a homeless person leaning up against a wall. And you move into the sidewalk, perhaps to avoid tripping on the person, or maybe you're a little bit afraid, we don't know. But what is the first thought that comes into your brain? Or perhaps another example might be you see someone that has a lot of tattoos. You see someone whose skin color is different from your own, who is dressed differently than you might dress. What is those first assumptions? Now, I'm not saying that that first thought is automatically an inflexible belief, a bias, but it might be. What we need to do then is ask ourselves some questions about that first response. For example, question number one, did that first response use the word all or every? Or did it imply that every single member of that group was that way? Let's stick with our homeless person for the moment. Let's say that the thought popped into your brain, oh, homeless, addicted. That implies to me that you have that first thought, that belief that says all homeless people are substance abusers in some way. So when you begin to see that word all mm, kind of moving into bias territory. A second question to ask yourself has to do with how we learn our biases. Ask yourself, have I had a memorable positive or negative experience with members of this particular group? And as you recall from our definition, the characteristic of an inflexible belief can be positive. So that experience might have been good, might have been bad. So did you, for example, have a run-in with a person who was homeless, who was drunk, and you were frightened and scared, and it threatened your basic survival? If you had that intense experience that might have created this bias, again, you're probably moving into bias territory. Um, did you have a favorite cousin who happened to be gay and who was extremely artistic and you treasured that talent and you treasured that person. Perhaps that positive experience created a bias that you're applying to everyone. So question number two, did you have a positive or negative memorable experience? And the third question is, how do I react when I find out that my bias is wrong? that that gay man isn't artistic, that that homeless person isn't addicted to a substance. Well, if you just let it go and you just say, eh, it's okay, I was wrong, no big deal, you don't have a bias. Because we cling to our biases because we want to be right. And if you just let it slide away, you're probably okay. On the other hand, do you feel, oh, I don't know, a little betrayed? A little bit like, wait a minute, that's not the way they are supposed to be. They're supposed to be the way I thought they were going to be. If you get into that, you probably have a bias going on. Also, do you find yourself declaring that that person is the exception to the rule? Okay, it's the only, only homeless person who isn't a substance abuser. Uh, when you start to rationalize it, you probably have a bias. You created it. So, watch those first thoughts and explore it further by asking those questions.